The preliminary results are in on the gun violence reduction plan to deal with uh, the rise in shootings in the city. For more on those results, I'm joined now live in studio by Toronto Police Chief Mark Saunders. Uh, good morning. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Good evening. Uh, so let's remind people about the gun violence reduction plan. This was announced in June. Uh, it kicked off July 20th, if I'm not mistaken. It was an, uh, an eight-week plan, which means it has, uh, it has wrapped up now. Uh, what are the results? Is it, uh, could, do we have any takeaways, any findings here from this? Well, I mean, there are a lot of takeaways and a lot of findings, and, and, and part of that is we're, we're continuing. Uh, so we said that it was intelligence-led from the start. It will continue to be intelligence-led, so we still have officers that are still plugged into the gun violence reduction plan. But over the eight weeks where we had more resources available at the key times, um, we, we were able to get some pretty good outcomes. We, we arrested over 247 people uh, that were gun-related occurrences, 136 firearms were seized and 19 were seized on top of that through judicial orders. Um, our next phase is to still finish off a couple of things that we have to do when it comes to gun violence. There's still some people out there that we're interested in right now as we speak and, and as we go forward we hope to have some successful outcomes with those as well. So you mentioned this is going to continue. Um, is there a sort of a cap on the amount of time it's going to continue for? Is that an indefinite continuation? Well, let's be clear. I'll, I'll never stop on investigating gun violence. It's something that, that I have to do. It's something that the communities need. And if we're going to get this right, there has to be that combination of working with the communities to get it right. Um, I'm not going to have the saturated resources that I had where I... I it was mandatory for officers to come in, but I do have some plans in play to uh, keep things going so that we can address some of the stories that I still have some concerns with that are right across the city right now. And remind us just exactly how this worked. It was extra police resources during certain hours, and it, and it started sort of across the city, but is it focusing on certain locations? And uh, just run us through sort of how this how this worked, the well, increased police. That, that's what it was. What we did is we, we looked across the board, and we looked at where our, our, um, our gun violence was occurring. Um, we utilized our uniform officers as well as our specialized folks to look at and, and strategically um, do the investigations and make the apprehensions towards the, uh, towards the, uh, the gun play. But on top of that, by having more officers. Um, there were some amazing stories that took place over the summer, uh, some real successful outcomes. And, and what I liked about it the most was all the while, while we're doing that, we're also developing relationships with our communities at the same time. So collectively, it worked well. Uh, you know, last time we had you here on the couch and we were chatting uh, about this, you, you said that uh, the majority of the, the gun violence in Toronto this year uh, was gang-related, that it was targeted. Is that uh, a couple of months later we're chatting now? Is that still uh, the case with what's transpired since? It, it, it still is. It, it either has a street gang overtone or high-risk lifestyle. Uh, the average citizen that is law-abiding, that uh, is not uh, hanging out in areas where there's a propensity for violence, um, is, is generally safe. We're looking at a very small percentage out of the close to 3 million people that are causing a lot of the havoc across the city, specifically people that are motivated to pull out a gun and shoot somebody else. One of the elements of the gun violence reduction plan as well that maybe isn't talked about enough is the um, injection of more lifeblood, more resources into youth programs. You know, I know it, it probably takes longer to sort of extrapolate results from something so grassroots, but is there anything you can, you can uh, give us on, on the youth program element of this? No, and, and that's, that's a good point, Gurdip, and that's something that, that I have spoke about for quite some time, and I think it's getting some traction. All levels of government understand this as well, too. When I was talking around uh, today, I, I'm talking about, you know, five-year-old kids, they don't say that my future is I'm going to shoot somebody. That's not the case. But when you take the journey that takes them to where they are, where they are shooting people, um, what can we do to add the proper funding, the resources, so that these kids can make better decisions ahead of the curve? And, and, and that really is what success should look like. And, and so those opportunities at the front end, and, and rest assured, there's still people out there right now that should be incarcerated. There are dangerous people that are shooting other people that aren't going to stop right now. So this approach is not the necessary approach right now for them. Um, it's apprehension. And then at the back end, when they are incarcerated, when I keep saying that 90% are getting released, well, what environment are they going to get released to and, and, and what type of person is that going to be? What mechanisms are in play to give opportunities to change? Uh, there was a town hall yesterday on uh, the gun violence reduction plan. How did that go? What type of feedback did you receive yesterday? I didn't receive any feedback yet. I'm sure that I will hear on that feedback. It mm -hmm. was uh, Minister Blair and uh, the, some members of the Liberal um, government that were having a discussion on, on strategic uh, uh, approaches to reducing the gun violence. 
what I do like is that all levels of government are talking about the conversation. Mm -hmm. It's still a hot topic, and that provides an opportunity for us to holistically figure out the right solutions. I wanted to get your take on one thing that uh, former police chief Bill Blair had to say. Uh, he said that roughly half of guns seized from criminals in Toronto are sourced domestically, not from the U.S. Um, what, what's your take on that comment? I, I've, I've spoke to that, the, the, the straw purchasing that takes place, and, and yes, that is the case. But what I'm interested in, and, and, and I'm looking at the bigger picture, what I'm interested in, people that are motivated to shoot other people. There are people that have guns that don't. People that are motivated to shoot people that will shoot people are my concern. And when we look further down the line, five, ten years from now, when we have the discussion about 3D printers, um, then getting access to a gun is not a relevant discussion. It's they will get the gun. And those people that are willing to use the gun, that's what I want to focus on. That's what I want my men and women to focus on because that, to me, is a critical point. Okay. Uh, you know, we'll leave it there. Toronto Police Chief Mark Saunders, we appreciate you joining us. I know you're a little under the weather, so thank you for not cancelling this morning. Good seeing you. Good evening. Okay, we'll see you Thanks. again.